when can I take my hands off the wheel in my Tesla? And I think it'll be sooner than you expect. I'll go through all of today's Tesla stock news, including the Tesla move that surprised investors, Elon Musk's bullish remark, and I'll start with a short clip from Mark Invest, and I'll come back for a deeper dive into it at the end of the video. One common criticism of Tesla is that they've been talking about robotaxis for a long time, and the question is, okay, well, where is it? Um, well, I actually think we've seen a lot of progress over the past few years, um, notably in their full self-driving software, um, that they released to consumers, you know, and they just they just took that out of beta mode, right, and allowed a lot more people access to the latest version of the software. Um, and what we're seeing in the the videos that many people are posting online is that it's already possible to complete, you know, nearly full drives um, fully autonomously, right? So there's still someone behind the wheel, you know, they have their hands there just in case. It's not perfect, um, so that you know, it's not quite perfect yet, uh, but I think that we're closer than ever. And I think that, you know, we take confidence in all the improvements that we've seen in AI over the past uh, few years as well. I mean, that has to help autonomous driving. You know, we do see early elements of some things, you know, some improvements that we've seen from large language models, for instance, bleeding over into the development work that's that's happening for autonomous driving. Um, so we're really more excited than ever. I mean, we think this is going to drive uh, the future value of Tesla when we look out five years. We think it'll be two thirds of the enterprise value in, in five years. So so we're super excited about it. Can't wait for August. This time it is quite different. If you don't feel like that is because you haven't tried V12. I'm looking forward to the new Tesla stock price target for Mark Invest. We know is going to be higher than $2,000. Elon Musk just made a bullish Tesla comment. This is not accurate. Tesla would be the second highest and X with XAI would be the third if measured correctly. That was Elon's reply to this post. It shows that the first place is at 350000 h 100 GPUs and the second place is at 30,000. But do you remember this chart from last year from Tesla? This is progress in units of a 100 GPUs. Keep in mind though that H100 provides approximately six times compete performance improvement over a 100. So assuming that this projection turned out to be right, we are above 100,000, maybe at 140,000? 140,000 divided by six, that's 23,000. But we know when something is built for a specific purpose, it performs much better better. So I don't think that math is really all that accurate. Just like James, I'm wondering how much CapEx did Tesla spend on GPUs in Q1 to alleviate the compute constraint? This will be interesting. Between this Giga Austin's expansion and the 46 and a half thousand additional vehicles produced versus delivered, I think there is a good chance that Q1's free cash flow will be negative. But if FSD continues making fast progress, that is completely irrelevant. The latest Tesla move surprises investors. Tesla has settled a lawsuit over a car crash which killed an Apple engineer in 2018 after his car veered off a highway near San Francisco court document showed yesterday. It's surprising because the case facts seem to be in favor of Tesla, but as Gary said earlier, there's always uncertainty with a California jury. The case was headed for a trial this week, and not only did it surprise Tesla investors, it also surprised legal experts because there was evidence reportedly showing that person playing video games on his phone just before the crash. And adding more to the surprise, Elon has long said he would never settle an unjust case against Tesla, even if Tesla would probably lose. The worst part here, though, is the settlement, while undisclosed, is likely to lead to more autopilot litigation against Tesla. And I believe Gary's explanation here makes sense. We believe the rationale to settle this case is likely to avoid any negative PR associated with an unexpected adverse jury verdict, which could negatively impact demand and regulatory approvals associated with Tesla Autopilot and the broader FSD technology. We would expect Tesla to decline to talk about this case on the Q1 earnings call on April 23rd, citing ongoing legal proceedings. So Tesla is making a practical move here. This is how mainstream media is going to interpret this move by Tesla. We can take it as an admission of wrongdoing because Elon said, we, Tesla, will never surrender or settle 
an unjust case against us, even if we will probably lose. But Fred admits that in practice, Tesla probably didn't want to bring more attention to everything that was coming out of the trial about how it viewed and tried to prevent misuse of autopilot. I think this explanation makes the most sense given the rapid advancements for the robotaxi. They wanted to avoid any huge smear campaign while the trial was on. Check this out. This is great news for us Tesla stock investors. Baird has removed Tesla from its bearish fresh pick list and said the news that the company's Robotax would debut on August 8th combined with growth in the energy business were positives the way against the weaker than expected delivery numbers. Seems like maybe Tesla is going to do a bit more business in Argentina because the president of Argentina will meet with Elon Musk at Tesla's Giga Texas factory this Thursday. And this is more good news. Sabotrack charge curve improvements are coming over the air later this week quarter to unlock up to 154 miles recovered in 15 minutes. A problem was found with Cybertruck charging, but Tesla's drew back lead no response. We ID'd a corner case, but that sometimes locks posts into 100 amp max when charging Cybertrucks from very low state of charge. Since this guy is so good at arriving with 0% remaining in his battery, he found this corner case a few times. Bug fix piloting right now will be fully deployed next week. Tesla shared more news with us, down to four days from delivery to opening a site with prefabricated supercharger units. Drew Baglino explains, while I agree it may not make a difference in overall site timelines giving permitting and utility IX, these prefabricated innovations fundamentally drive down costs per pose deployed. Time equals money. We will continue integrating more prefab content, including lighting and solar, to bring more charging value at lower cost for our customers. What's going on here? Chinese EVs are piling up at European ports, and Tesla is partially to blame for the congestion. European ports turned into car parks as vehicle imports pile up. But it's the Chinese EV makers without sales networks or onward transportation among leading causes of congestion. And some Chinese brand EVs have been sitting in Europe. European ports for up to 18 months. There's also a lack of truck drivers in Europe. The lack of trucks is a very common problem, said one person familiar with the situation who added that many vehicles had been reserved by Tesla. Any new brand will be facing this issue if you don't have scale, if you don't have the regular deliveries, then you are not the trucking group's largest clients. In the meantime, Lucid has just announced its deliveries and the number is only a number that a mother could love. So I guess a lot of mothers own Lucid stock. I feel bad for anyone holding it. But they did sneak out record first quarter EV deliveries as price cuts took effect. I think this is actually really relevant to us Tesla stock investors. British Columbia, which is where I live, bans level three and higher autonomous vehicles. This is in Canada. And the ban even extends to driving a vehicle capable of autonomous driving at these levels without the system engaged. We know that Tesla is at level two right now. This bans level 3, 4, and 5. Penalties range from a fine of $320 and three driver penalty points. So you do this a few times and you lose your driver's license and up to a maximum fine of $2,000 with possibly six months in prison. However, if you have a permission from the province, then you're all good. I think many places will have a very similar model to this. Rad4 made a prediction Neo stock is going to zero. The sooner you see it, the better. Maybe it's going to be the next car company for which it is going to be over. The Chinese battery electric vehicle maker Neo publishes annual report revealing negative free cash flow of $2.2 billion after losing $1.6 in 2022. It has now lost $8.4 billion since 2016. However, the stock market says no, we love NEO stock today. It's up 5%. If you look at this chart and you look at NEO specifically here, you might have an idea, at least partially, why that's happening. You can see that uh, the chart is slightly up. It's still uh, really low, but it's slightly up. But if you can look at this part here, you will see that it was also slightly up for a bit and then down. This is free cash flow history of pure EV makers. Bloomberg has a bullish article for Tesla. Tesla has built a charging business to be taken seriously. If you think about it, when we reach full self driving and there are many robot taxis all over the place, the supercharging business is going to explode because 
many vehicles will be charged as superchargers then instead of at home or at war. Tesla bull Ben Calo out with a note this morning that Q2 deliveries likely to decline year over year. He's estimating 444,000 deliveries versus last year's 466. His price target remains $280 versus Wall Street consensus, which is now at 196. Tony Saganaki from Bernstein though says, we see a Robotax unveiling on August 8th as more aspirational akin to Tesla semi and roadster announcements and not likely to be tesla's next model we only expect competitors offerings to get better over the next three years byd currently offers a fifteen thousand dollar vehicle however it doesn't help that tony never had a buy rating for tesla he only said sell or hold but if you hold nothing then yeah you're not gonna benefit from the rally this is crazy but not really daniel's sister didn't want to buy a tesla because of elon and what he represents but after looking into it more, she leased one and now says you would be crazy to buy anything else. We got deliveries from China for the last week. The number stands at 1,900. Last year's Q2 is in green, so substantially below last year's Q2. But compared to some of the previous quarter, we are doing fine. We did see earlier that Tesla is more focused on exports right now in China. However, this plus high Q1 ending inventories increases the risk of more price cuts in China over the next few weeks. Uh, there is a post on X that's getting a lot of attention. You can see 805,000 views. Remember the Giga Press that Tesla developed with a Chinese-owned company. Xiaomi is using similar Giga casting machines to make its new SU7 EVs. So the narrative is that China China screwed Elon Musk. But Tesla doesn't own the company that makes the Giga castings. The entire auto industry has been moving to large single piece castings for a while. So this is definitely not China screwing Tesla or Elon Musk. It's the entire auto industry moving in the right direction and the Chinese in particular are really quick. I also expect other automakers to start using 48 volt architecture and steer by wire. It's just that Tesla does a lot of these things first. Also, do you remember that Tesla actually sent an instruction manual showing how to build a 48 volt vehicle? Tesla actually wants the industry to move towards that. One reason is it makes it much easier to work with other suppliers because all suppliers adapt to this new change. Just set aside what Elon is telling you for a minute and think, do you really think they will launch a $25,000 car from Austin and only build a few thousand in 2026 at the risk of Osboring their 1 million in capacity on the sexy fleet? It doesn't make sense. It takes two years to build a factory and start production. What date is it now? I think the play is this, build a robotaxi platform production method, which yes, some of which can be replicated for another vehicle. Number two, pre-FSD reaches a ton Autonomous driving efficacy number three launch robot taxi in 2026 where tesla can make money on a small production volume if fsd works as intended and then never build a consumer $25,000 car if they were planning on building a $25,000 mass market car they would need millions in additional production capacity this is not happening in the next two years so in this scenario if fsd progresses according to expectations all good brilliant move if not no volume growth for many many years but omar says they are not praying they are training i think both are fine you train and then you pray while you train uh james agrees maybe both but I think there's nothing wrong with praying as long as that's not your main strategy. It's just a side thing that you do, that you don't expect to yield any results. But looking at this video from Omar, where he spends 45 minutes picking up passengers, dropping them off with zero interventions, no prayers are needed, just a lot more training. There are Tesla bears posting this video clip of FSD saying that FSD made... Uh, a wrong move. This account issue is copyright strike, so I'm not going to play the video. But supposedly what happens is the vehicle goes into here. There's a red light, as you can see, but you can make that right turn as long as it's clear and no other cars are coming from the left. Then FSD goes ahead and starts making the turn, accelerating. The driver said it was the wrong time to make that turn because supposedly a vehicle was coming from somewhere there. The driver then slams on the accelerator pedal and accelerates quickly, saying that uh, the SUV behind 
came to a complete stop. But how far was it? It definitely was not close enough for that vehicle to be visualized over here. So how dangerous was this actually? A lot of people are likely exaggerating this. The video, by the way, was created by AI Addicts, who is a previous Tesla employee who was fired. If you want to see more FSD fails, uh, he does post videos showing weak spots of FSD. In the meantime, this is Dr. Know-It-All posting his experience with FSD V12.3.3 on a pitch black clover leaf highway entrance my model y avoided a massive amount of gravel and sand that had spilled onto the entrance at about 20 seconds into this video you suddenly see the gravel sand appear on the left hand side of the clover leaf and with the car going around it there were significant lateral forces at that moment so if the car had driven over the sandy surface it very likely would have skidded sideways in a dangerous motion however just as I identified the problem and was about to disengage FSD for safety, the car increased the turn angle and steered clear of the sandy material on its own. And it did it faster than my reaction time, no less. So we are seeing first pieces of proof that Tesla can actually not only beat edge cases, but outperform human drivers when encountering some of these edge cases. And that is big news. Just like ChatGPT pretty much has better grammar than almost any human being on Earth, FSD will drive better than any human being on Earth. And it's only going to get better from here. It will never be worse than this. Here's someone driving from downtown Houston in the morning mist. It's a 30 mile drive with zero interventions, zero hung, zero anxiety. The anxiety part is uh, the important part. Occasionally, I have uh, zero intervention drives, but with a bit of anxiety. In my case, it's usually because sometimes it drives a bit close to the curb. And it's not that it's driving too close to the curb. If I knew that it's safer than human driving or just safe, I would not be worried at all with the car being that close to the curb. But because I know the system is not perfect yet, that's why I get worried. And this Tesla owner came to the US simply to evaluate FSD. He did a two hour FSD drive without disengagements in Washington. After his experience, he's convinced that full cell driving will emerge in two to three years. He traveled all the way from Germany to Washington. Here's FSD doing a 90 minute drive with zero interventions. And check this out. Did V12.3.3 just recognized hand gestures at this school crossing? Because it's not going right. It's not moving at all. Not yet. And now, yeah, it started yeah, and now it's moving. I'm not really sure if it happened because it recognized the sign, the, the gestures, or simply because the person stepped to the side out of the way. At this point, it is clear there will be an increase in FSD penetration in Q2 for three simple reasons. The free trial, the fact that Tesla salespeople will now be presenting, giving more test drives, and V12 is just so much better, and it keeps getting better. But will that keep happening in Q3? It will depend on FSD's progress. And Emmett Peppers is making some big predictions here. I believe greater than 50% chance that a significant rally in Tesla stock back towards an above 1 trillion market cap, so basically a doubling uh, and more, will occur once there are solid indications of increasing FSD take rates. This actual increased take rate, I believe, is highly likely already underway this quarter. In conservative case scenario, I would see the stock to start rallying during the Q2 earnings report in July. However, it's possible a more bearish scenario where FUD on Tesla and all things Elon is so prevalent that the market interprets the Q2 indications as a one-time quarterly bump. In that bearish case, the market would then likely properly acknowledge Tesla's new FSD business model by the Q3 earnings report in October. The light at the end of the tunnel is finally showing up with FSD 12, but we have been in this tunnel for what feels like so long, it's easy to hallucinate seeing something not really there yet. But the reporting of actual FSD take rates is the actual measurement we can use to confirm if this light is getting meaningfully bigger or not. This is my personal experience with FSD. If I was just a regular person, and I have tried FSD 
and then I'm presented with an option to buy a subscription. Let's say I have a Tesla vehicle, didn't buy FSD, have no subscription. Would I continue my subscription here in Vancouver? No, not yet. If it got just a bit better, then I would take it. But at this point, it's close. It's very close, but not yet. But it's getting really close to a point where if I wasn't a Tesla stock investor and I didn't care about any of this, it's getting really close to where I would say $200 a month. That, that's worth it. Very close. Tesla's Pure Vision fleet vehicle has been spotted in Taipei. I have lots of family there. I'm sure they are looking forward to getting FSD. If FSD can work in an Asian city, which are usually much more difficult to drive in than American cities because uh, people drive there like crazy. Sometimes I feel like there are no laws. It's, it's more about guidelines for driving instead of having solid rules for driving that you have to follow. But as far as Asian cities go, Taipei City is not nowhere near as bad as some other cities. It just has a lot of motorcycles, so you got to watch out for those. Omar has a very interesting take here. Production of FSD is ramping just as production of the Model 3 ramped back in the day. Imagine if the current group of Tesla bulls were around in 2018. Imagine the nonsense arguments they would make until they get to 10,000 units a week. Nothing matters. It's irrelevant. They start ramping production 1,000 a week, 2,000 a week. They're still dismissive because it's not solved. We haven't reached full capacity that we have to reach. That's still a long way of 10,000. Just because they got to 2,000 a week doesn't mean they can do 10,000 a week. What we talked about for years, it's happening before our eyes and most people are still in denial. Let's see how many still doubt after Smart Summon and 12.4 are released. Many investors came into the sub because they understand auto production, but they are confused by how AI production works, which isn't their fault. It's very new and very unusual. Dave Lee says, if auto OEMs don't license Tesla FSD, then who are they going to wait for and for how long? I think first movers to license FSD from Tesla will have an advantage, get the cameras, sensors, and hardware for computer into the vehicles now because it takes time to roll out across the fleet. But it took forever for them to adopt NAC, so I have a hard time believing they will be looking forward with self-driving tech. I agree with Farzad 100%. At some point, there will be a transition where Tesla will stop being valued on how many cars they sell per quarter to how many self-driving miles happened each quarter. So when do you think this will happen? Most people think it will be in 2026 or later. I'm a conservative investor, so I try to keep my assumptions fairly conservative. So that's why I chose that option. A Wall Street analyst is running a survey asking how much would you pay for Tesla's FSD? It will be interesting to see the results. Tesla plans new world's largest supercharger with an impressive 200 stalls. This one is going to be in Florida. Oh, we just learned that Tesla has 2,300 pre-assembled superchargers in North America. Sawyer accuses New York Post of clickbaiting. The New York Post found a few anecdotal posts online, and somehow that means an astounding rate. Tesla Cybertrucks were rushed out, are malfunctioning at astounding rate. Wait, what? This is positive for two reasons. Prioritizing of limited 4680 for max Cybertruck production and feature rollout of 500 mile range version. The pack is half empty. Wow. There's some disagreement about this though. Uh, someone says it's not half empty. That is a vent channel. His bio says he works on battery pack failure analysis. They've said that they were planning on mass producing this car in, in 2025. Um, you know, we have heard, uh, you know, a, a few things. There's, well, there's, there's, I think two kind of separate things here, right? There's the there's what they're talking about is the $25,000 car, which I think could actually be the same platform as RoboTaxi. And it's a question of like whether or not that's a car for the consumer versus just um, these cars are going in fleets uh, that are then being operated by Tesla and potentially longer term an operating partner that owns and maintains the vehicles for RoboTaxis. Um, so I think, you know, that it's it's totally possible that that, you know, potentially could be delayed from the initial timeline. Um, but the real question is actually when the software will be ready, right? Because the Teslas that are on the road today um, already have the capability to be turned into fully autonomous vehicles, um, you know, once those software updates are layered on and sent over the air. Um, so I think, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, the RoboTaxi prototype that we see gets gets unveiled on time is a question of when will they launch the 
of a taxi network. Mm -hmm. So I think that this announcement shows their confidence in that platform, um, which is really exciting. So uh, that's that's what we're looking for for the next five years. You know, when can I take my hands off the wheel in my Tesla? And I think it'll be sooner than you expect. I have stuck with my safer than human driving prediction by the end of 2030 for FSD. But after having seen FSD V12 initially, I thought uh, I'm likely to be conservative. Then FSD V12 initially came out like, hmm, yeah, um, it's good that I didn't change uh, my prediction. And then I tried FSD V12 myself I and mean, I'm starting to think I'm maybe too conservative about that. What is the moat that Elon Musk has established for Tesla in the domain of uh, intellectual property? This is really what we're most excited about for Tesla's opportunity in autonomous driving. They have an unparalleled, uh, unparalleled data advantage um, compared to every other company that's solving for full autonomy. Um, you know, they just released on Twitter a graph showing the number of miles that they've collect that they're uh, that customers have driven in full self-driving. We think that they get you know, access to roughly two and a half mi million miles a day of customer data that they can potentially use to train their system. I mean, when you look at companies like Waymo, uh, you know, that are like passing roughly like 10, a little over 10 million miles in the total lifetime of the project hmm. uh, versus two and a half million a day. I, I mean, that's unprecedented um, and data is really key here in a lot of AI applications, proprietary data. Um, and so we think that this is what will uh, could allow Tesla to be one of the first companies to scale. And that's really important because we think that the majority of the economics and robo taxis, and this is actually in our latest big ideas deck that we published this year, our annual research deck, the majority of the economics will um, accrue to the players who are able to tackle you know, the first half of urban miles traveled. Um, with autonomous driving platforms. Uh, so I think, you know, Tesla's both production scale, the number of cars on the road, um, as well as that data advantage, uh, really, they're a dangerous competitor here. Um, so so I'd, I'd be nervous if I was a, another autonomous driving company. At this point, Tesla's data advantage is unbeatable. There's no way to beat Tesla in the US when it comes to mass deployment of robotaxis, uh, if using only the vision approach.